limiting beliefs and how we can overcome them. Limiting beliefs. So at the very core of mental illness is maladaptive beliefs. So what are limiting or maladaptive beliefs? Well, they're beliefs that you have, which are things that you put faith in, that you put confidence in, things that you pivot your life on that limit you in your, in your existence, that hold you back or hold you down. You may have heard of limiting beliefs in uh, motivational seminars or work meetings where they try to help you to learn how to access your potential and, and reach to your goals. Uh, but I'd like to give you a parable. And this is a story of a family that flew on a private plane uh, over an ocean. But unfortunately, they got into a plane crash and the, the plane came crashing down into the ocean and the way that it crashed, the pilot died, but the family survived. And they were able to float on some debris to a nearby island. But of course, this island was deserted. So this family finds themselves on a deserted island. It's a father, his wife, and his daughter. And they don't have much by way of survival tools that they can use. And they begin to starve and they're asking for help and they're eating what they can, uh, but, uh, but, they, but they don't know which vegetation is safe and they don't have materials enough for, for hunting. And so as their supplies are dwindling and their life force is dwindling, they find themselves in a very desperate situation, which they realize they're going to die. Now, they have one thing with them, which is a cell phone, but the cell phone is extremely low on battery, but they try anyhow to make a phone call out on the cell phone. But when they try to make the call on the cell phone, they're able to connect to emergency uh, operators, but they're not able to talk long enough to explain their situation and where they are before the phone dies because it was so low on battery. Now, in the debris, they have some very limited tools that they could use to survive. And amongst their, their random scraps that they have and little bits of rations that they're surviving off of, there's one little gift, and it's gift-wrapped. And it was something that the man's father gave him. And the wife says, why don't you open that gift? It could be something that could help us. And the man says, this little thing is not going to be anything. We need a knife, a, a hatchet, and that can't fit into this, patch, this, this package. It's probably just some $20 bill or maybe a, a small prepaid card or something like that. That's not going to help us on this deserted island. And the wife asked the husband, well, why can you be so sure? And the husband says, look, when my father gave me this gift, he said, here, this isn't worth very much. So I know that it's not going to be worthwhile to open this. Let's just drop it. But every once in a while, the wife would bring up to the husband, he should open that, that, that package and we should see what's in there. And the husband says, no, I'm telling you, there's nothing worthwhile in this gift. My father told me that. Eventually, the daughter dies. Starvation. Eventually, the mother dies. Dehydration. And so the man is left alone. And in his dying hours, he decides, since he's going to die now anyhow, he might as well open the gift and see what was inside. And so he opens the gift and he finds a cell phone battery. It wasn't worth much. But the battery was fully charged. The man put the battery in his phone and he was able to make a call out. And the emergency forces were able to get there just after the man died. So what's the moral of the story? Well, the reason why the man never opened the gift that could have saved their lives is because of the limiting belief the man had. 
In this story, the man believed that what was in the package was worthless. So he wouldn't open the package, even though his wife kept telling him, just open the package, just open it, just see, maybe it could help us. But why did he believe what he believed? Well, it was because his father actually told him that what was inside the package was worthless. Likewise, many trauma survivors grew up with parents that were diminishing and invalidating, that were harsh and abusive, that were neglectful and abandoning. And so those trauma survivors grow up with a belief that's what's inside their package, that what's inside of them is worthless. Even though in reality, what they really have inside is spectacular. It's life-saving. Could you be one of those people? Do you have a limiting belief about yourself, about your worth, about your potential? Do you suffer from limiting beliefs? Are they holding you back? I'm going to give you some examples of limiting beliefs, and we'll kind of discuss these examples. Here's here's one example of a limiting belief that a person can develop. I can't because X. I can't because X or blank, if you will. And you can insert whatever you want into the blank. I, I can't because I'm poor. I can't because I'm young. I can't because I'm old. I can't because I don't have the resources. I don't have the time. I don't have the talent. I don't have the ability. But ultimately, I can't. You have to really watch your wording when you speak to your subconscious mind. Because you as the conscious self is made to be the leader of the self. And when you tell your subconscious mind, your brain, I can't do something, your brain says, we can't. And then it responds accordingly. You see, because human beings are not made to be limited, to be in captivity to be slaves. They're not made to not be capable. They're made to be able. So when you feel incapable and you convince your brain that you're incapable, your brain gives you chemicals that are punishing. (laughs) It gives you pain and it manifests itself in psychological pain, depression, or anxiety. Because you're saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. And that limiting belief The way you're informing your subconscious, it gives you emotions, it gives you energy in the body that makes you feel pain. And then with all that pain in your body, now you really feel like you can't achieve more, do something that you would like to do, reach your potential. I can't is a limiting belief. It's a limiting statement. And we should rarely to never actually say that. Because we are actually in a position of power. So we must learn to rephrase the way we view things, to rephrase the way we talk to ourselves. How should you talk to yourself? Well, how would you talk to your child? If your child said, Dad, when I grow up, I want to be an astronaut. You're going to yell at your child and say, you can't do that. Goodness, I hope not. You don't teach your child limiting beliefs. You say, well, okay, son or daughter, if that's what you want to become, then I believe you can. Study hard, work in school, listen to your mom and dad, and you can become whatever you want to become. Okay, so if you tell that to your kid, is it true? Well, sure, it's true. So why don't you tell it to yourself? So that you can overcome this limiting, I can't belief. By the way, that's a rhetorical question. Meaning, I'm not asking you why you don't do it. I'm telling you, you need to do that. You have to talk to yourself the same way you would talk to your child. And instead of telling the child, oh, you can't become an astronaut. You say, hey, okay, fine. You can do whatever you want. You say the same thing to yourself. Instead of telling yourself, well, I can't afford a new car. I can't get a job without a college degree. I can't go to school right now. I can't. And you keep telling yourself, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. 
and limiting the mind and convincing yourself of something that's only going to be to your detriment for the rest of your life, instead of doing that, you should speak to yourself in your personal power and say, that may not be the right move for me right now. Not I can't go back to school, but at the moment, I don't think going back to school would be the most advantageous. Say it like that. Don't say I can't because that's not true. And when you believe something that is untrue, it will lead you into false beliefs, which leads you into mental illness. Your mental health is dependent on you only believing the highest quality beliefs that are true, that are supported, that are scientifically accurate. And it is not scientifically accurate that you can't get a new job. That's not scientifically accurate, so don't say that. And then, by the way, your subconscious won't give you the punishing chemicals to go along with that limiting belief. Stop speaking to yourself like that. Stop giving voice to the old narcissistic parent from your past. Speak to yourself with love and compassion and encouragement. Be real, but be honest and say, I don't want to. I don't want to do that right now. Or I would like to get a new job, but now may not be the best moment. Vocabulary is important. You have to make sure you're speaking to yourself in a way that's upbuilding, that's encouraging, and is accurate so that your beliefs are high quality and they're accurate. Does that make sense? Here's another limiting belief. It's, out, it's uh, learned helplessness. Is another limiting belief. Learned helplessness. This manifests itself in an infinite number of ways. But essentially, what you're doing is you're focusing on everything you cannot control, whatever is out of your purview, your capabilities, out of your jurisdiction of management, and you're focusing on your helplessness. In fact, you're choosing to perceive yourself as helpless. That's learned helplessness. You may have literally learned to do that because in childhood, you didn't have the option of standing up to those who were in a position of authority. So without that option, while you were in childhood, you learn to view yourself as helpless. You learn that the only way you could survive is just to give in to the stronger dominant force. But please recognize now as an adult, Outside in the real world, walking around with learned helplessness is a limiting belief. So don't focus on everything that is not in your capability to control. Focus on what you can do per every situation. You might not be able to always change and alter your reality uh, in every situation, but you can always change your perspective or your perception on the situation. And then there may be some things on the outskirts that we can work on, All right? We don't have to give in to learned helplessness. Well, my husband is abusing me, so I guess, but he makes all the money, so I guess I'm stuck. There are things you can do. Don't just say, I guess I'm stuck, and then give up, throw up your hands. Focus on what can be done. What can you do? Can you reach out for help? Can you enlist help from the authorities? Can you separate yourself? Can you get a job, get some income? Can you, and it turns out there's something when you really go down the list of what you can do, there's something that you can do. And just the very action of Working on yourself, improving your mental health, your financial health, your emotional health, your physical health, you actually start to feel better. You come out of your depression, your confidence rises, and then that gives way to you being able to make even more good moves for yourself. Your capability builds upon itself. Your competence builds upon itself. So start with what you have and build. Don't focus on what you do not have. Don't fall into learned helplessness. Or another limiting belief is everyone else is more than me. Everyone else is superior to me. 
because they're smarter than me or they're more qualified than I am. So essentially you're comparing yourself to others. Comparing yourself to others is a limiting belief. Looking at how other people are supposedly more than you is a way of holding yourself down and it only leads to the detriment of your future. It doesn't elevate you to reach your potential. So we need not look at other people from the standpoint of them being superior in so many ways than us, but we need to look at other people as equals. They're equals in value. And you aren't equal to them. People will judge me. That's another limiting belief. Well, I'm really worried about what everyone's going to think. They're going to judge me. They're going to think I'm this. They're going to think I'm that. Okay, that may be true, but it may also not be true. Number one, because you cannot read people's minds. It is a limiting belief to be focused on whether or not people are going to judge you just to assume that they're going to think something negative about you. They're going to think bad about you. That is holding you down. It is holding you back. You must release yourself from the limiting belief of everyone is going to judge me. And remember that no one is in a position to rightfully judge you. Other human beings are just that. They're your peers. They can't rightfully judge you. The only one that knows your thoughts and your intentions is you. You're the only human that knows your own heart, your own thoughts. It's just you. So therefore, you're the only person with enough data to truly form an accurate judgment of the self. Other people can't judge you, and you can't judge them either. Because it's equally a limiting belief to start judging everyone else and say, well, they're bad or they're worthless. Or, no, 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 no. You can't judge them. They can't judge you. Don't accept their judgment and don't try to judge someone else. Focus on your thoughts and your potential and what you intend to do. Because your identity is who you want to be, not who everyone else is perceiving you as. Their perception. It's just that. It's a perception. It's a way that they're choosing to view a situation. And it's none of your business. The way that you view me is none of my business. That's your thoughts. I cannot live in your head. I cannot hear your thoughts and I don't want to. I got plenty of, plenty of my own chatter to deal with up here. Does that make sense? When we're thinking more rationally, more logically, like, like I'm articulating here, it helps us to get out of that limited belief system. Oh, everyone's going to judge me, so I don't want to make this move or that move because they're going to judge me. No, 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 no. doesn't matter whether they judge you or they don't judge you. You need to fulfill your potential, your purpose. That's your job, not to read people's minds and try to avoid judgment. Or how about this belief? If I take a risk, I'll just get hurt. If I'm vulnerable, I'll just get hurt. The key to bravery is vulnerability. Bravery hinges on vulnerability. You cannot be brave without being vulnerable. You have to step out into the arena, onto the court or the field, in order to score points, to make goals. But when you step out, there's opponents out there. So you're exposing yourself to risk. You're exposing yourself to failure. You're exposing yourself. You're making yourself vulnerable. That is what bravery is. The ability to make yourself vulnerable. So don't allow your fear of vulnerability or your fear of getting hurt to stop you from growing and showing up. Along those same lines uh, is fear of failure. That's another limiting belief, kind of similar. That, that fear of getting hurt, that fear of failure. Think about failure for a moment. How did you learn to walk? How did you learn to talk? How did you learn to stand? Was it through a process of always doing it right the first time? Of course not. The first time you walked, you obviously fell down. The first time you tried to talk, you were making all types of mistakes and pronouncing things wrong. 
So, so should you be afraid to fail? When failure is the only process by which you learn anything or you grow? The only way to obtain success is through the path of failure. Facts, right? So allow these logical facts to be your higher beliefs. Don't give in to low beliefs from, from an abusive childhood. Oh, I'm afraid to fail. If I put myself out there, I'm going to get hurt. If you don't put yourself out there, you'll never succeed. If you don't try, you can't, you can't be successful at anything. Your, your, your greater fear, the greater failure is never having tried at all, is to reach your deathbed looking back on a life unlived because you never even gave it a shot. You never even gave it an opportunity. Of course, we don't want to be embarrassed or make mistakes, but who's the person in NBA history who missed the most amount of shots? It's Kobe Bryant. And not far behind him, other greats like LeBron James and Michael Jordan, the people who miss the most amount of shots are the people who we regard as the greatest to ever play the game. Okay, so what about the, 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 the perfect players that never missed any shots? What are their names? Do you know the, the name of the man in NBA history who missed the least amount of shots? No, you do not. I looked him up. <laughs> his name is Doug something. He didn't, he, Doug, Doug is not remembered for his NBA career. Because by failing less, he also succeeded less in the NBA. And therefore, he is not remembered. You do not know who he is. Failure is not a bad thing. Failure is a part of the process to be successful, to reach our potential. Don't be afraid to fail. Another limiting belief, I should be doing something else right now. <laughs> so is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, always thinking that you should be doing something else or you should be somewhere else or be further along in something. So we really love to do this with our age, right? It's like, man, you know, I'm, I'm already 32. By 32, I should already have this and this and this, right? And so all you do is you just name everything you don't have. By 32, I should have this and this, whatever you don't have. So if, if, you, if you're not married, then you name a spouse. And if, you don't have, if you're married, but you don't have kids, then you name your kids. If you don't have the house, you name the house. If you don't have the car, then you name. If you don't have the career, then you name that, right? We really love to focus in on everything that we don't have and everything, everywhere that we are not. But that belief system is limiting. It's, it's detrimental to our life. We cannot grow and, and progress by focusing on everything you do not have. Because the list of what you do not have in the places that you are not at is infinite for every human. Take who you regard to be the most successful human alive right now, and there is an infinite list of what he or she does not have in the places that she is not at. Every person is not everywhere at the same time. So you need to focus not on the infinite void of what you do not have or have not achieved, but you need to focus on the finite amount of things that you do have and what you have achieved and build on that. Because what you focus the mind on will compound itself. And so if you focus on the void, then the void will compound itself. But when you focus on what you have, then your possessions will become abundant. Your accomplishments will become abundant. It's unwise to worry about and create shoulds, which are just fake rules that you made up for yourself or that your mom told you once. 
And so I was like, oh, well, I should have a car by now. I should be doing this by now. I should be doing that. These are fake rules. They're not real. You made them up. <laughs> Since you made them up, go ahead and dismiss those rules. Cancel those rules out because they're just making you sad. They're just limiting your life. It's a limiting belief. Another limiting belief. I don't deserve blank and blank. I can't get to that. I can't reach that because I don't deserve it. Wow. How incredibly false. How incredibly false. Do you think all of the money in the world is evenly distributed by on who deserves what? Who deserves how much money? Is that what you're thinking? Of course not. You know better. You understand the way the world really works. A lot of these old beliefs, they sound juvenile or childish because that's where we got the beliefs from. We developed them when we were children. And that's okay because there's still beliefs I learned as a kid that are useful for today. Like I learned about not crossing the street without looking both ways. I still use that one, <laughs> right? There's some useful beliefs from childhood, but there's some that need to be upgraded. You might've learned as a kid, don't touch the stove, but you got to upgrade that as you get older. Likewise, if you learned as a kid, you're not enough or, 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 or you can never be loved or failing is bad or people are going to judge you if you learn those things. It's time to upgrade your thinking now and, and recognize you do deserve everything. You deserve the best, right? So what I want to do for you to help you is switch mindset. And we're going to get out of the old subconscious brain. And we're going to get into conscious mind thinking. And so instead of focusing on limiting beliefs, I want you to learn to adopt freeing beliefs. Yes, because your beliefs can set you free. What you believe can say, if that man would have just believed <laughs> that there could be something in that package that was of value, he literally could have survived and saved his family at the same time. And gratefully, that's not a true story. It's just a parable. But it helps, it helps us to il illustrate the, the incredible foolishness of living according to limiting beliefs when we have so much potential, when we're made for so much and we're so powerful as human beings, we need to be in freeing beliefs and freeing mindset. So here are freeing beliefs to live by. Tried and tested. Freeing belief number one. I am a good person and full of potential. Look for evidence in your life that you are a good person and that you have infinite potential because that's the truth about you. When you live according to the truth, that truth is going to set you free. I can do whatever I want to do. That's limiting belief number two. I can do whatever I want to do. Okay, so we're getting out of that whole, I can't. No, there's no, I can't. I'm doing what I want to do. You do what you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do. It's up to you what you want to do. That's a freeing belief. I can do whatever I want to do. Believe that. Number three, I am powerful and can make incredible things happen. I am powerful and can make incredible things happen. This isn't lies. I'm not giving you <laughs> affirmations. This is just the truth. This is just a true belief. You are powerful. You don't even understand your full potential. Like, do you know our phone screens work based on electricity that comes from our fingers? That's how it knows where our finger is touching. Because there's literal power coming out of your fingertips. You don't even understand how powerful you are. You are a being of energy. This is just the truth. 
but you need to believe the truth so you, that you can see the world the way it really is, so that your eyes can be open. I am powerful and I can make incredible things happen. That is, a, that is the deepest truth about humans. We can make things happen. It's what we're made to do. We can make things happen. You can cause and change things and manipulate circumstances and get things going. You can make things happen. Do you believe that? Know it. Limiting or a freeing belief number four. I am not less than or more than anyone. I am not less than anyone. You're not less than anybody. There's nobody who's worth more than you. All humans are the same in value. So you're worth just as much as anyone else. Freeing belief number five. People are fickle. Opinions change. People's thoughts are none of my business i.e. I don't care too much about what people think of me. It's normal and natural to want to have a good reputation and not wrong. It's okay to, to, to want people to think well of you, but you cannot base your life and your worth on other people's opinions. People are fickle. Do you know what that means? Fickle? Like they change their mind. Constantly. One day, one celebrity's in, and then the next day, that celebrity's out. Everyone's like, I hate that guy. And then next, next day, that guy's back in again. You can't keep up. People are fickle. They change their mind all the time about people. How many times your girlfriend tell you, yeah, you know that guy, I'm done with him. And then she ends up back with that guy that she said she's done with. You guys did the whole dinner, the girls' night out and everything, talking about how you didn't need men anymore. And then she's right back with this guy. People change all the time. They're fickle. So don't worry about the fact that right now, maybe someone is judging you or they don't like you. A freeing belief is to recognize that their opinions change. So if they don't like you today, don't worry. It'll change. They may like you tomorrow. And if they like you today, don't worry. It'll change. (laughs) They may not like you tomorrow. So divorce yourself from their opinions. Because people's thoughts are none of your business. Each of us just focus on our own thoughts. Freeing belief number six, vulnerability is courage. A lot of people hate the idea of being vulnerable. Vulnerability is not a bad thing. There's a time and a place, right? And there's, there's measures to how vulnerable we should make ourselves in certain situations. But we have to recognize that in order for us to be courageous, which we want to be in life, we do have to cra- cross the threshold of vulnerability. We do have to open ourselves up, expose ourselves to some risk. So embrace that as a reality in th- instead of running away from being vulnerable and being afraid of taking a risk. Number seven, failure is a part of growth. Remember my analogy about Kobe and Michael and LeBron? The greats are the ones who are missing the most amount of shots. Utilize that in everything you do, in your your effort to form relationships with people. Utilize that knowledge. Know that not everyone who you go to form a relationship with is going to reciprocate your your warmth and affection. Recognize that as a fact. When you're making your sales calls, recognize that not everyone is going to say yes. In fact, most are going to say no, but it is a numbers game. You just have to get through a certain amount of no's before you get your yes. Failure is a part of the process. Sometimes you're wearing down one particular target. You're asking one particular person for one particular thing 
you have to recognize they're going to say no the first time and the second time and the third time. But over time, your persistence may wear them down. It is a key to life. It is a key to success. Failure is a part of your strategy. It's a part of your secret strategy to become success. So don't be afraid to fail. It's part of growth. Freeing belief number nine. I deserve all the best. Why not? There, since we're equal to all other humans, you realize there's no other humans that deserve the things that you want more than you do. Just all, we're all the same. So we're here. So why, do, why not? Reach out for what you want. It's okay. It's okay to succeed. You don't have to tell yourself, I don't deserve good things in my life. It's limiting if you do that. It's going to hold you back. You are deserving. A better belief is I deserve all the best. I want the best. Other people deserve all the best too. I want everyone to have the best. But since I'm not responsible for them and I'm responsible for me, what I'm focused on is getting the best for myself because I have to and taking care of my family. I deserve all the best. And, and, and live up to your values. Re reinforce to yourself that you deserve the best by, by being the best version of yourself. Freeing belief number 10. There's always something else to focus on, but I'm content wherever I am. There's always something else to focus on, but I'm content wherever I am. So we let go of the old limiting beliefs that I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? If you're not on your phone, you're talking to someone, you feel like you should be on your phone. If you're on your phone and you feel like you should be talking to someone stop doing that freeing belief is to recognize that though there's always something else to focus on you're content where you are you are already in the best place you can be and make the most of your present circumstance enjoy it be content Freeing belief number 11, I pursue what I want because I need to have purpose. I pursue what I want because I need to have a purpose instead of limiting ourselves and saying, well, no, you know, I, I, I don't need those extra things and I don't need to become a boss and I don't need a promotion. Don't limit yourself saying that you don't need this and you don't need that. Pursue what you want. Your desires are your values. Your values are the building blocks of the self. So when you want something, it is an expression of the self. Your wants are important. And if you have a healthy, harmless want, a harmless desire, then pursue it. Pursue what you want. I pursue what I want because I need to have a purpose. Freeing belief number 12. I am lovable. When people get to know me, they're bound to fall in love. Believe that about yourself. I am lovable. When people get to know me, they're bound to fall in love. Or you can change that to, I am likable. People get to know me, they're bound to like me. Instead of limiting ourselves and saying, I'm not lovable. If you're not lovable, then you don't want to go out to the party because you think no one's going to like you at the party. And you don't want to reach out and, and form connections and meaningful relationships and bonds because you think that no, and then people aren't going to love you. And then you pursue all the worst people and all the avoidant people and the emotionally unavoidant, unavailable people and the, 
the guys who are already married to someone else and you say, oh, I'll, I'll pursue this relationship. This is great because I'm not lovable. So it's perfect if I just pursue a guy that's already married. And then what happens? You get your heart broken. You say, oh, this is awful. Why am I always in a relationship with people who are unavailable? It's because you have the core belief that is a maladaptive belief. It's limiting saying, I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. Let that go. It's false. Believe in the truth. You are lovable. You are worthy. If you understood how lovable you were, you would be smiling all the time. You'd be a little embarrassed to realize how lovable you are. My final freeing belief, I will be successful. If you want to know the secret to success, it's just to never give up. With that secret, now you know you will be successful. At virtually anything you do, if you never give up on it, you can't actually fail. Even something that looks like a failure is not a failure. It's just a part of your process because you never gave up. So continue to pursue whatever it is you want to do and be the person that you want to be because you will be successful. I think my camera went out on Zoom, so forgive me if you lost visual. But those are the freeing beliefs. So I want to encourage you guys to adopt those freeing beliefs and utilize them in your life. And instead of limiting yourself down, because all of the limitations saying that you're not lovable, all humans are lovable. So you're making yourself less than human. All of your limiting beliefs are, are, are categorizing yourself as being subhuman. Don't do that. It's very ungrateful to everything you've received. But instead, reach up and become the best version of yourself. Reach your potential by adopting freeing beliefs. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. You guys take care. Have a good night. I'll see you Wednesday.